three months have been an absolute nightmare. The scale of the murder, the displacement and destruction in Gaza can be quantified in terms of lives lost, buildings destroyed and hospitals bombed. But the full extent of the horror is really impossible to comprehend. What must it be like to experience such catastrophic loss and mourning? What must it feel like to be sustained constant terror for three months straight, knowing that death or serious injury could happen at any moment? What must it feel like to be so shamefully abandoned by the international community? It's so easy to fall into despair, but it is vital that we say with a unified voice, no matter the failures of our governments and institutions, that we the people say, no, this genocide cannot continue, not on our watch, not in our name. And I'm standing here alongside you all, a huge number of passionate and principled people working for the same goal. I feel hopeful today. I don't feel represented by a government who sits on its hands during genocide. I feel represented by the incredible advocacy of the South African legal team at the ICJ. It's so powerful to see a country like South Africa who defeated apartheid in their own country, taking on the apartheid state of Israel on the world stage. The South African government understands its own history as a mandate to stand up against racism and colonialism, and I wish our government would do the same. is complicated. Killing children is wrong, bombing hospitals is wrong, mosques, church, schools and ambulances is wrong. Denying a besieged population access to food, water, fuel, medicine and shelter is wrong. Genocide is wrong. That isn't complicated. It's not good enough to passively, passively call for it to stop. You have got to make it stop. How do we make Israel accountable for its crimes against Palestinians? How do we fight for the Palestinian freedom? Empty rhetoric won't stop the slaughter, but concerted economic and diplomatic pressure can. That means passing and enacting the Occupied Territories Bill and the illegal Israeli settlements and political viability of Israel's settlements in the West Bank. It means pushing, pushing for an arms embargo and the suspension of EU-Israel Association Agreement on the EU level. And it means recognising that from the river to the sea, Israel is committing the crime of apartheid against the Palestinians and calling for the re-establishment of the UN Special Committee on Apartheid to investigate this. So I'm asking you today to keep calling and writing to your local government TDs, especially the government ones, to demand tangible action. Tell them that you want Ireland to adopt an independent foreign policy that reflects the Irish people's commitment to the principles of human rights and international law. Make Palestine a real electoral issue. Christmas, Bethlehem pastor Munter Isaac gave a beautiful and heartbreaking sermon and I want to quote what he said. If you fail to call this a genocide, it's on you. 
It is a sin and a darkness you willingly embrace. I feel sorry for you. We, the Palestinian people, will be okay. Despite the immense blow we have endured, we will recover. We will rise and stand up again from the midst of destruction, as we have always done as Palestinians. Although this is by far the biggest blow we have received in a long time. But again, for those who are complicit, I feel sorry for you. Will you ever recover from this? Your charity, your words of shock after the genocide won't make a difference. Words of regret will not suffer for you. We will not accept your policy after the genocide. What has been done has been done. I want you to look at the mirror and ask, where was I? Miha Martin and Leo Valker, where are you? contribution or shame of their complicity. It's not too late, it's not too late for Ireland to change course and be on the right side 